really, really honored to take this. Oh, job. don't be silly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do we've, it well. We've yeah. known each other a yeah. long time, so this is not a problem. Well, I, I mean, actually, I think um, just curiosity and yeah. luck, a lot of luck. I mean, I think all Nobel Prize winners are pretty lucky people, and they sort of look happy and live longer because they were lucky and they <laughs> sort of know that. And it, it, it's, you know, you just have to be grateful for it because there are lots of scientists who are, I would say, were much better scientists than I am, but they just didn't happen to stumble on something really important and interesting because you, you cannot predict when you're going to stumble on something. You have to be able to recognize, of course, when you stumble on something important and interesting. And I'm sure a lot of people just say, ah, you know, that was a mistake and go on without realizing. So I just take some funny combination of luck and good judgment. Well, I, seeing a protein disappear, um, and the way the experiment was done, it was so well controlled, and uh, the way it was done, you, it was really only one possibility, namely that somehow or other, inside the cell, this one protein went, and then very, it was very easy and quick to discover. It really was you know, a matter of totally stable and then totally unstable, and then back to stability again. So very peculiar, I mean, really very mysterious. And the correlation with cell division also became clear very quickly. So one knew that there was something, it was obvious to me, not, I was not so obvious to everybody else, I think. <laughs> People thought I was completely crazy. But I, I, I somehow knew in my heart of hearts that this was important. Uh, there are some people who are very just too, I don't know, they, they don't seem to have much fun. Just work, work, work. Playfulness is really, really important, I think. You know, and that's what I admire. You know? <laughs> I mean, what I tell people, if, you know, the young people say, well, you know, what should I do? And I tell them to keep their eyes on the horizon, but their feet on the ground, and to work very hard. And I think that's a good recipe for success. Sometimes I think today, when I, I was sort of lucky in a way because of the time when I grew up in science. I mean, we knew very little. So almost every direction in which you looked, there were interesting and important unsolved problems. But you had to sort of talk to people to know whether a problem was, had been solved or what was known about a, a problem. And you went to a meeting and it covered the entire range of what we would now call cell and molecular biology, just in one little meeting. Uh, nowadays, you don't do that very much anymore. Very you know, you go to very specialized meetings, you're doing a PhD in cell cycle. You, the only thing you know about is the cell cycle. And so how would you ever know that what you're doing might apply to the fundamentals of the action of the brain or memory or the nature of the soul or something? You know, it's a, but it's a problem that, I think, actually. But again, teaching is tremendously important for that because that does tell you what's going on and you have to know much more widely about where things are. And it's, you know, teaching also, it taught me that learning is, I've sort of forgotten that learning is fun. And people tend to forget that because, you know, learning often isn't fun. I mean, you know, it's just hard work. But if you, if you, you know, it, it can be tremendous fun. You know, I suppose a book that I discovered that I was given as a prize in school was a biography of Alexander Fleming, the discoverer of penicillin. And uh, another book that made a deep impression on me at the time, I was maybe even younger, was The, the Life of Marie Curie. Uh, th that was a tremendous inspiration to me. I'm not quite sure exactly why. I mean, but, I mean, she was a very great scientist. I guess purifying radium was a fantastic achievement, actually, at, at, at the time. And she was the only woman surrounded by all these men with their beards and mustaches. It's quite funny, actually. Yeah, I think hearing Nobel Prizes explained how did they come to, to find it is almost always really, really interesting. I, I love reading people's Nobel lectures when I can understand them. I mean, in the case of the physicists, they're often very difficult to understand, actually. You know, the biologists 
uh, are, are terrific in many cases. What I would have said that I thought they did have in common was they liked things to be clear. And so they liked, they were always looking for the underlying simplicity. There was always, you know, in very complicated systems, there was some, you know, nature is, is, is very obscure, but also fundamentally simple. But finding that simplicity can be extraordinarily hard.